What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 34 of Who Gives a Dram. Another week here on the podcast. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, episode 34. Um, before we get into the podcast, let's take care of a little bit of business. Um, if you guys are not already, make sure you're following the podcast on uh, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Make sure you're subscribed on there. Make sure you're liking the videos on YouTube. Make sure you're leaving a review on iTunes. Uh, that all helps the show out a lot. Make sure you are um, following the podcast on Instagram at Who Gives a Dram. Uh, make sure you're following on TikTok. <laughs> dude, I went viral on TikTok this past week. You didn't go viral. I did, dude. You I'm at 1,400 viral. views right now. How many likes? Uh, 200 it's not 200 go on go on and look right now it's live on the podcast i'm going to show you up i just checked while kale's looking at that um make sure you guys are also checking out snoot glass uh the official glassware of who gives a dram i use it every single week kale's using it with me this week uh www.snootglass.com promo code wgad20 for 20 percent off your entire order and you guys make sure you're checking out the grapevinemedia.com who is uh presenting this podcast for you guys www.thegrapevinemedia.com 191 sorry not two all right sorry wrong. so i have 191 likes on tiktok right now sorry about that uh i've if you guys can't already tell we're doing uh the third uh whiskey with kin it's not whiskey with kin it's whiskey with kale i'm the only one that's been on to do it we're doing the third whiskey with kin this week you guys uh we haven't done one since um colonel e.h taylor small batch and that guess was who that was with with you and then Me. we did sazerac rye guess with who that you was with? But it's whiskey with Ken because I have me because I have I'm gonna have other people on so, um, yeah so we're we're gonna get into this today. Um, today's episode 34, and if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I'm naming off athletes for every episode. I don't know why I just am. So Kale, do you want to tell the people what episode it is today? You just told them it's episode 34. Who is who is number 34? Oh, there's a lot. Who do you think I'm talking about? I think of two. Okay, who's both the first Boston one? icons. All right, who's the second one? Paul Pierce. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Today's the, the Dave, today's the David Ortiz. I guess today's the David Ortiz slash the Paul Pierce episode of Who Gives a Dream. Off the bat, favorite David Ortiz moment. Go. Uh, game time Grand Slam in the ALCS where the uh, the cop where Tory Hunter flipped over the into the bullpen. I think it's an all time classic. Yeah. Against Detroit. I remember watching that. I was I was watching that live. We all watched that live. Were you there too? Yeah, we were in the living room. Yeah, that was 2013. But my, my, probably my favorite baseball team. Who walked? Oh, uh, uh, what's his name? The catcher. Saltalamakia. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jared Saltalamakia. Yeah, with a uh, single yep. up the middle. Jared Saltalamakia. That's a name. I wonder what. Yeah, what the longest doing? name of all time. Uh, I'll put up a picture of how it looks. Saltalamakia. It, it was like it was like, it was half, like a rainbow. Half of a McDonald's M on his back. Um, yeah, lots of good moments with David Ortiz. We saw him. We saw him play a few times at Fenway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, do you think the all-time David Ortiz moment is is that home run, or is it him saying this is our fucking city? Well, there's that, and there's also the walk off against the Yankees in like the fifteenth inning of the yeah. ALCS, two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. Joe Buck on the call. I think Joe Buck was on the call both times. Joe Buck's a legend. He is. I love Joe mom Buck. Mom hates him. I don't know why mom hates him. <laughs> Who does she hate? <laughs> I, I, that's a good point. I, that's, I love Joe Buck. I think him and uh, Collinsworth together uh, for Sunday Night Football oh, yeah. is awesome. Well, you know, he's coming in Sunday Night Football now. Yeah, Drew Brees. Yeah, damn right. We'll see if he's good or not. I it's don't, Drew I, Brees. He's good at everything he does. Not growing hair. No, not lose, uh, not keeping hair. Okay, that's one thing he's not good at. He's not good at not having kids. No, that's Philip Rivers. Yeah, but Drew Brees still has quite a bit. He has more than the average person. He has four. It's more than the average person. What is the average? I don't know. Look at the up. average. No, I have not a in, computer in front. Yeah, of Yeah, and there are going to be children per household in the U.S. Okay, I'm just curious. 
Okay. Are you going to fill the blank space as to I will I... fill the blank space. All right. Do you want me to spit? Why don't you... Do you want to... Okay. Uh, don't you, do you wanna I'll talk about the bottle. It's my bottle anyways. Okay, yeah. Well, so, so we'll, we'll get into the bottle. What we're drinking today, what we're sipping, is a Old Forester single barrel barrel strength uh, store pick from our buddies over at Wyoming Package. Um, was lucky enough to get one of these a while back. And uh, Connor, since he's a big barrel proof barrel strength guy, knew we kind of had to do this one on the podcast. We have a few bottles that me and him have talked about that we're going to do together because they're two a few of our favorites. I'm an old Forester snob. Yes. Um so you know I, this is obviously a must for me. Um I won't talk about the upcoming ones but yeah, we we're a bit, we've been saving a few bottles for whiskey with kin because I'm definitely going to have more people on the whiskey with kins. It's just <laughs> I haven't I haven't yet because of there really is no reason. Maybe it's laziness. Maybe it's not having time. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Maybe it's just the fact also, that... Also, no one that we can consider kin drinks bourbon like we do. It, yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be people who are super Well, you, don't, you also don't want to waste a good... Not waste, but you don't want to do a good bottle with someone who doesn't really know. No, I think that would be fun. What, are you going to do uh, 107 with Ryan? No, <laughs> if, if Ryan was here, we'd be doing... I wish I saved mellow corn for old Ryan, for Ryan because because no, Ryan is Ryan, a piece of mellow corn. With Ryan, you should probably do. Uh, what's the most basic one you have? You already did Rebel Yell. Uh, probably. <laughs> um, I haven't done Rebel Yell yet. I've oh, done, you're I did right. Rebel Yell. You have to do Rebel Yell with Ryan. Then. Well, no, I did Rebel Yell. I'm glad you brought that up. I did Rebel Yell um, this past week. I was on the Chill Filtered podcast. I co-hosted, and I don't know even know if you listen to Chill Filtered or not. Yet. Uh, Chill Filtered Podcasts with Cole and Robbie are is one of my favorite podcasts. I listen to it every single week. I'm an avid listener. And Cole just had a baby. And Robbie asked me to come on. And I said, absolutely. fucking lutely Excuse my French. Um, and I went on to their podcast. And I, I hope it's releasing this Monday. I'm pretty sure it is. Because um, this will release on Wednesday. So it's uh, we had a really good time. We did Rebel Yell. We talked about... Um, just life and you know kind of where who gives a dram came from and then it's it's a great episode so if you're a fan of whiskey if you're a fan of mine if you're uh if you if you listen to who gives a dram go over check out chill filtered it was a great time an hour's worth of of whiskey talk and um it was a really good episode but uh that being said yes i would do uh rebel yell with ryan and well the people don't know who ryan is ryan's our six foot ten big boy cousin who very much in his heyday had his own version of rebel yell yeah <laughs> what does that mean it means he had a rebel yell all right well uh 1.93 is the average children per household really yeah as of 2019 so people need to start reproducing yeah people need to start spreading the seed i traveled 500 miles to give you my seed Lumberjack. <laughs> yeah you would play the woman in that part um so you explain what we're doing today. You explain the you explain the the uh, barrel strength. Let me get bourbon. into the specs because I think the specs of this are pretty. I'll impressive. go into the specs. No, I got the specs. No, because I got them right here. From this specific bottle. No. It's a store pick. Go ahead. So you don't know the specs. You're not all knowing. You're not the watcher. I'm not. Wait, I'm not. I'm not the. I'm not the timekeepers. You're not. The timekeepers aren't real. Yeah, well, <laughs> spoiler alert. If you've been keeping up with Loki, listen. You Sorry. know I watch Loki. You know we watch Loki. Uh, episode four just came out this past week. Uh, mind-boggling. The timekeepers aren't real. They're robots with robot heads and Sylvie. Well, we don't know that they're not real. We know they're not. They're that, for sure not. That, real. At least what was there wasn't real. Do you know what was cool though? Their layer was pretty cool. Like the, oh, where yeah. the timekeepers were, where yeah. they were sitting, was pretty sweet. But I could tell that they were not real because I don't know if you remember watching it. Like their faces, they just looked like shit. It wasn't an MCU level CGI. Yeah. Yeah, like they just looked bad. So I yeah. knew that they probably weren't real at I that exact. I thought Sylvie was gonna throw pull Tropic Thunder. She picks up the head and just ah. Oh. <laughs> that would be, that would be pretty sweet. But that she might get electrocuted because they were robots. Yeah, but they, the head it was just the head. It wasn't, it wasn't plugged into anything anymore. True. Um. Okay, so this specific barrel comes from Warehouse One, Floor One, sixty six point four five percent alcohol. Re, uh, for a uh, 132.9 proof. A uh, sheesh. Uh, it's a hot boy. Sheesh. It's tasty. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's, it's made by Brown Foreman. Um, still by Brown Foreman, as old all old Forester products are. 
Um, shouldn't don't believe it has an age statement. Don't know if it usually it is an age statement. And typically with Old Forester, it's a higher eye. So it's actually it's a I think it's like a seventy percent corn. It's yeah, seventy percent corn. Well, according to Breaking Bourbon, seventy two percent corn, eighteen percent rye, ten percent wampum barley. Um, that's probably what you know this smash bill is. Hmm. Um, so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a barrel strength old Forester. This retails for about eighty bucks. And uh, like Kale said, we were um, you know our, our our friends over at Wyoming Package Store um, released a single barrel. We were lucky enough to get one uh, when they came out. So. Um, Again, if you're in the area, go check out Wyoming Package Store. By far the best. By far the best in the area. By far the best in the area. So um, why don't we get this in the glass to let it rest for a second. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more Loki, right? Did you just pour my bottle? Yeah. It's my bottle. I pour it. What are you going to do about it? Break it over your head. <laughs> you are? Really? Strangle you with your own cord. Jesus. You're getting dark on the podcast. Yeah, tune into life in the basement. Um, <laughs> I, I probably won't touch this again. This is definitely going to be not an occasion bottle. This is going to be. Uh, well, this is not a like a. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I cannot drink Obviously. this every week. <laughs> no, no, I don't know anybody who drinks. Uh, well, you know, there's like 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 there's cat. What's the, th- the trend on YouTube for a while? Five whiskeys that you you only need five whiskeys to open at a time. There's like a daily uh, impress your guests, um, uh, a Friday bottle, um, an occasion bottle, and one more. Probably a mixer? Yeah, cheap mixer. What would be your cheap mixer? Because I think I might know mine. I yeah. mix Sazerac rye with everything. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good point. I really do. I you, what would be a good mixer is that Rebel Yell. And I know I haven't done it on the podcast yeah. yet, but that would be a good mixer. Yeah. So what would your five bottles be then? Uh, Daily Drinker, Buffalo Trace, um, Friday Bottle, 1920. Okay. Um, cheap Mixer, Sazerac Rye. What was, this? what was the next one? You're the one who said it. I know. Occasion okay. Bottle? Oh, no, Impress Your Guests. Uh, Impress you guess probably the Blood Oath Pack 7 because it comes in the wooden box and it's exclusive. It says the very limited release. Okay, so we're only doing bottles that we own for yeah, this? Bottles that we okay, own. all right. Um, and then uh, uh, Occasion Bottle, probably either this or Michter's Limited Barrel Strength Rye. Okay, so what are they? So it's Cheap Mixer. So I'll start from the bottom to the top. Cheap Mixer for me, off the bat. Um, Melon Coin. No. You I'd probably it? say I'd probably just for fuck's sake I'd probably say Rebel Yell. Um, what was it? Daily. I I mean it's tough to not go with Buffalo Trace or Eagle Rare. One of the two. Depending Buffalo on Trace is because it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably Buffalo Trace. But I've been saying that. I, I'm not copying you. I've been saying no. that. Well, yeah, and then the Friday bottle. That's tough. That I, I would I would choose 1920 as well. Um, I would say 1920 or 107 is is foreshadowing for the next whiskey with Ken. Yeah. Um, and then Sorry, what was it? With kale. Impress um, your guest. Impress your guest. It's like a fancier bottle. Okay. Uh, impress your guest. I was thinking Blanton's just because of how it looks. Yeah, I would pick Blanton's. And what's the last one? Occasion. Yeah, Occasion bottle. Um, I don't know. I would actually say I'm gonna change mine up. So my Friday bottle. I would say my Friday bottle would be uh, Colonel E. H. Taylor Small Batch. My Impress Your Guess would be 1920, and my um, Occasion would be 107. See though, <coughs> Blands. I love Blands, but Blands probably should be my um, Occasion or my Impress Your Guess. But I need to have Colonel. I need to have 107, and I need to have 1920 because those are my three favorite pours. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, E. H. Taylor is my favorite, but. It's not readily available enough in Connecticut or Rhode Island to justify putting it as a Friday bottle for me. No. And I have two bottles. You only have one. Well, I well, I bought you a bottle, but... Well, I bought you a bottle. Gifted me a bottle. I get I did, yeah. Um, and no, I but I bought the other bottle. Your bottle is almost gone because I got a little poor happy when I got the second bottle. <laughs> yeah. Good point. 
Uh, let's see. So let's get into this whiskey, guys. Um, we'll also support. So, so this is our uh, this is our barrel strength. What are you getting on the nose? Oh yeah. We have disclaimer. We did try. They they allowed us to try this in the store a while back. Um, yeah. And then we I have since I have since poured it since I've had it. Connor has not had it since. I haven't even given it. a sniffy. Uh, I might give it a sniffy. Mm, okay, oak, oak, and oak. A little fruit. bit of barrel spice, some fruit. You getting some cherries? Mint? No, that's the fruit. <coughs> oh, no, I know. I'm saying specific. I'm trying to uh, are you getting down. mint? No, and I'm sticking my whole nostril in there. Yeah, so am I. Go. There's no better glass. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, with these snoot glasses, dude. That's, that's I'm telling I you. Stuck half of my face. Yeah. There. Um. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's barrel strength. It's hot, yeah, yeah. spicy. It's, it's feeling like a bar- definitely a barrel spice. That makes sense. Barrel strength. Um. It's more barrel spice to me than rye spice, even though it's a higher mm-hmm. it's a higher rye percentage. But I'm getting like that dry spice to it. But on the back end, or not even the back end, just kind of mixed in there. There's a nice fruit, dried fruit. It smells like to me. Nothing candyish. Nothing too sugary. Nothing too vanilla. I'm not even getting a whole lot of vanilla in this. It's more fruit, floral. Uh, cherries is a good way to put it. On the it. nose, I get next to no vanilla or caramel or toffee, any of those. But, 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 I, I think I'm getting like a hint of mint. I don't, I don't know where like you're coming from. Like a, like a strong spearmint, like I'm a gum. I'm not sure where you're getting that one. You got gum in? No. You chewing on some gum? <laughs> let's, see what, let's see what Breaking Bourbon has to say. Who cares? I do. I like Breaking Bear. No, dude. they don't. They're the ones we went. We last time I was on with you, we went on the the fucking tangent about uh, warm multigrain bread bullshit. Yep. I'm not listening to Breaking Bourbon. They're 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 the definition of whiskey snobs. No, I disagree. No, I think no, no. Breaking no, Bourbon no. knows what they're talking about. I don't care if they know. They don't know for the normal person. Yeah, well, I don't care if you're a Somali. Who who gives a dram is for is for the the common man is for those who don't who want whiskey in layman terms. So we need our own website, or you need your own website. Yeah, well, you want to be my website producer? Nope, not even no, a little. There bit. you go. So, oh, I, I I listen. If anyone wants to produce my podcast for me, just hit me up because <laughs> seriously, I I uh, I'm getting sick and tired of doing it. No, I I like doing it though. Uh, a somewhat tame and straightforward aroma, con- consisting of. Cherry cough syrup, Granny Smith apples, uh, creme brulee, and wet oak. Like, where, no, there's no creme brulee. Though. Creme brulee is, is a burnt sugar. I know that's what, creme what it basically is. is. I'm not getting that. Creme brulee is tasty. Oh, yeah. Remember cre- the creme brulee yes, from Zach's? Zach's yes. Oh, my Of course God. I do. There was a restaurant that we used to go to for the longest time called Zach's in the, in the Stonington Borough in Stonington, Connecticut. And it was the best restaurant of all time. Remember, we didn't, you, we used to not like it. Well, it's because well, our palates grew up. Well, this is well, this was before you even liked burgers. Yeah, yeah. I used to get burgers, <laughs> and they were so good. At, well, I didn't realize this at the time, but they were so good that like the bottoms were nice and charred, and the middle was nice and pink, and like just perfect. But I didn't like the ch- I didn't like the charred marks on the burger, so I always thought they were bad. Oh, oh, did I forget to close the window? No, I closed it. Oh well. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you heard that cop car go by. We're doing this on a Saturday afternoon. Oh. We should uh, also mention my mind's going a million miles a minute right now. Um, for we we got to talk about our Fourth of July, even though it hasn't happened yet. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's got to. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> um, this is going to come out a few days after the Fourth of July, but we're recording this before the Fourth of July. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, as I grew up, that burger. Oh man, I never I, got to have a burger from them. Oh, oh. So good, and they had a creme brulee that they didn't. I think they stopped serving it like towards the they end. They did, I but remember. in its heyday, man, when we were like 12, 13 years old, we'd go there for like occasion dinners with the, you know, as a family, get the creme brulee. It was tasty, I loved it. Um, but but the reason we're talking about creme brulee, um, is because, shout, shout out Zach's by the way, because breaking bourbon, because well, Zach's is close. Bourbon. I know, but still, so, <laughs> um, maybe he listens to the podcast, um, maybe Zach listens to the podcast, maybe. <laughs> But. I'm not getting. I mean, listen. I am getting a, a sweeter, a sweeter nose to it. And actually, now that I'm letting it sip, 
I am getting a bit more of like a sugar, but I'm getting that apple forward. That's that fruit that I was, mm-hmm. I was thinking of. Breaking bourbon did help, did just help me identify that. I'm not getting a lot of cough syrup because that to me is medicinal. Yeah, what I get is cherry. Medicinal? I don't get cough syrup, cherry. But I am getting like a burnt sugar, uh, a grand, uh, uh, an apple like a like a like a um, tart apple like Granny Smith, uh, but oak, lots of oak too. But nothing like vanilla, nothing no, caramel. I don't get anything like sweet, like like that kind of sweet. I'm getting a little bit of that burnt sugar. I think sugar. the sweetness I'm getting is from, because you know, like fruits are like a natural sugar. Yeah, I think it's more of that. Okay. Rather than like a artificial vanilla creamy type sweet. Okay, um, but I would say that this nose is really good. Mm-hmm. Especially, the more you dive into it, the more you let it air out. I think it's starting to almost not be, not seem as much like a barrel strength. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't seem as much as a barrel strength. So, um, I I can already tell I'm going to enjoy this, and um, it doesn't smell like 133 it. proof either. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hitter. This might be the the highest one I've had on the podcast. Oh, by far. Not by far. 520 is up there. It's not over 130. I I might be. It might it's be. It's right next to you. Go check it. No, I don't feel like bending down. <laughs> Just pick it up. You. I don't think. <sighs> Empty bottle. B520. 127. Yeah, yeah, I told you. Oh, I like you. You were so sure. I was. I you knew were it so was, sure. I knew it was not over 130. Um. But anyway. Oh, what's. 920 is 132. 132.8 is 132.9. All right, so this is 920. We should do a blind of, of this and 920. See what we've been doing. All right, cheers. Cheers, you guys. Another week of Who Gives a Dram. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. Oh. Yep. First sip of whiskey. To, actually, that's not true. We we're downstairs at our uh, the powerlifting gym. My first. And I did do a, a car bomb, but that was a while ago. <laughs> it's nine in the morning. I wish. Uh, yo, that's hot. That's it's hot. So good. It's it's going down my gullet. It's it's putting. Do you know what my insides feel like right now? A campfire. They feel like um. Uh, who's the guy that caused Ragnarok? Surter. Surter. Feels like. I'm gonna put a picture up. So of you just swallowed it. You just swallowed the eternal flame. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. If you drink Old Forge or single barrel, you are swallowing the eternal flame. You Shout out to our size, MCU listeners size out there. Size of a mountain and destroy Asgard. What kind of what kind of whiskey do you think Loki would drink? Loki definitely drinks gin. He definitely <laughs> does. You're so right. <laughs> and it's definitely beef eater. No, you know what he drinks? He definitely drinks... Actually, no, he drinks anything that's London dry. Anything yeah, that's yeah, London no, dry. it's something that's extra botanical. Mm-hmm. That, oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, you getting a little bit of nut on this? Yeah. Let's just let's just take a break to say it's so damn good. <laughs> Once you, If you can get past the heat and you start to really pick up the notes, it's... it's... I'm getting... Um, I'm getting like a nuttiness forward, definitely more than I was expecting. It's hot, it's for sure. There's oak on there. There's that oh, bar- barrel spice is very present. I'm still getting the cherry. Are you? All the way through. I got to keep one in my mouth to really see if it sits on the tongue. The but. finish is there, like a, like it's like like it is present. It's saying hello. It's having a conversation. It's having a conversation with. Every it's having a full on like a conversation. It's moving in. Like you know when you you know when you go you, you to a that. bar and you see people you haven't seen in a while and they're kind of drunk so they they keep on talking to you. That's this whiskey with every single thing it runs into going down from my chest piece oh, yeah, down to my did. ball. Bro. It just it just sunk from here to here as you were saying that yeah and, Very, and i took the sip like a minute ago <laughs> yeah it's still like it's, it's still saying back hello it's saying it's hi, hi. It's saying, it's saying how's how's the family doing man like hey, tell me what you've been up to it's honestly down it's ex- to that studio apartment i got in my gullet yeah no it's it's actually 
explaining to my esophagus right now why you should invest in Bitcoin. It's 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 getting into a deeper conversation. I think they're now. Oh my God! Are they kissing? <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that. So I think they're gonna. I think they're starting to kiss. Remember that in the Jake Paul fight? I hope they kiss. <laughs> think they're gonna start kissing. Best part of the Jake Paul versus Paul, uh, Ben Askren fight. Uh, who said Pete Davidson said that? I love Pete Davidson. You think they're gonna kiss? Um, I gotta take another sip of it. Definitely nutty. I, I, like a nut, a nut note forward. I'm not the biggest barrel strength fan all of connor's elijah craig barrel proofs i haven't been the biggest fan of i have not had b521 which he said i will like um but this is fantastic oh, this hot. is so much more tolerable than elijah craig barrel proof I, I because disagree. elijah craig barrel proof like this this is hot and it goes down hot but elijah craig is is like swallowing a shot of fire see i don't agree i I actually think the opposite. This is very hot. <clears throat> it's delicious, but it's very hot. I, I get uh, personally from Elijah Craig barrel proofs, especially B five twenty and C nine twenty, um, which I think are probably two of the best batches that Elijah Craig has ever come out with. I think they're very drinkable. I think when everything's said and done, they're more drinkable than this, but that does not mean they're better. I think this has a better taste. It's hard for me Personally. to say that because, listen, Elijah Craig barrel proofs are some of the best rams out there. This is this is in a very very like this is it's in a category of its own. Like listen, like talking about David Ortiz, Elijah Craig barrel proofs are like the David Ortiz's of of barrel proofs. They're just like they're clutch. <clears throat> this is gonna be tough. I mean, it's this probably up like there. A, it might be. A, this is like a. Who's the guy from the Tiger? Miguel Cabrera? No, 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 no. Don't disrespect it like Manny that. Manny Ramirez? This, no, no, no. Better than that. This is this is probably Vladimir Guerrero. This is probably Mookie Betts. Hideki Matsui? No, this is this is Mookie Betts in a bottle. You saying this is Bernie Williams? I'm saying this is Babe Ruth. You're saying this is uh? I'm saying this is calling it shot and then nailing it. Okay. Because it tells you exactly what it is. You know exactly what you're walking into. And you, no surprises. It's just damn good. <clears throat> Maybe it's because I'm biased because I'm an old Forester snob, but... No, I would say Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is like David Ortiz. This is like Ken Griffey Jr. I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Because you're going to find arguments. A lot of people a lot of people think Ken Griffey, G, Ken Griffey Jr. Ken. is better. Okay, whatever. And Elijah... Uh, but if you look at stats... Elijah Craig might, um, uh, David Ortiz might be the better, the, 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 he's going to be the player who's going to go down in history probably as a better player. Plus overall. he has three rings. Plus he has three rings. But King Griffey Jr. has the smoothest swing of all time. And, and this one of the best, as, one of the best, uh, cleats ever. Oh, I, I pull, I, uh, on this podcast a few weeks ago, I don't remember what episode it was, but I pulled up my. Remember you tell my the story of the <laughs> two different sizes you got on Christmas Day for the King No, Griffey's. I forgot about that. I thought I traded them. No, you got no? one. You got them for Christmas, and one was an eleven, and one was a nine. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I might have mentioned on the podcast. I thought I traded them, but they were sweet. Yeah, they were the King Griffey Junior. I'm talking about the highs. You had the lows that were fine with the 360 bubble all around the bottom, the low tops. But you also got the high ones for Christmas one year. I'm talking about the light blue ones. Well, they were gray, but they had a light blue bottom. Yeah, that's the ones then, I got for Christmas. And then you got the gray high tops. He's going to put in a picture right there, but they came two different sizes. I don't remember the gray. You're going to have to show me what I'll the gray high tops were because I don't remember that. I, I thought, no, I got the gray with the light blue for Christmas. Yeah, and you got them the other pair uh, the Christmas prior, but you sent oh. them back to Nike because <laughs> oh. they sent you two different sizes. Huh. Okay, 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 okay. Now it's coming back to me. They were sweet. Those were my really. favorite shoes ever. <laughs> I so wish I had those King Griffies. Um No, you don't. <laughs> those those bubbles are definitely popped. Oh, well, whatever. I mean, if they were in pristine condition, dude, I would buy a pair. I would buy a pair tomorrow. I'd buy a pair well, right now. You have a pair of uh Griffey trainers that are mine. Where? The the Oh, those are the Bo Jacksons. Oh, Bo Jacksons. Those yeah, are the Bo yeah. Jacksons, which I'll put right here. Which are mine. Yeah. Well, I took them. 
And it's been like over two years, so they're mine now. I, I let you take them with you, but they're mine. If I wanted them back, I'd take them. No. Beat your ass. I, how, how? How are you going to beat my ass? Martial arts. Okay, what kind of martial arts are you going to use? Sumo. Sumo? <laughs> How are you gonna sumo me, dude? I got a I got a belly on me. Yeah, you do you fat. I'm not fat. You fat. No, no, I'm thick. There's a f- huge difference. People listening know. There's a difference between being thick and being fat. And being fat with a pH. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh let's read what Breaking Bourbon has to say about <clears throat> this score or this uh this drink. This dram. Potent with a burst of roasted pecans. There you go. Thick oak. Thick oak. (laughs) Talking about thick. Black cherries and leather. The flavors all come at you at one speed and aren't quite as punchy as I'd like them to be. I disagree wholeheartedly with that. The sip has a bold flavor overall thanks to its proof, but it's just just not very exciting. All right, uh, Breaking Bourbon, you guys must have some high standards because I think this is very exciting. I'm getting a lot of different flavors. I'm getting... That that nuttiness. Are you getting that nuttiness? Yeah, I don't think as much as you are though. No, I'm really. It's like the first thing I got was like a, almost like a Booker's type of of nutty profile, like a Jim Beam nutty profile to it. I wouldn't say that Jim Beam is is all nut. That's what they called me in high school. No, it's not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what are you gonna give it for a score? I mean, you know, mine's gonna be biased. Well, mine's gonna be biased too because you know our this is from Wyoming. It's their single barrel. It's you know they're some of our favorite people in the in the whiskey world. So it's not gonna be as high as you might think. I might put it because of my opinion on barrel strengths. Yeah, that's all. That's the whole thing. I love barrel strengths. So this might be higher. Nine point three. Holy shit! That's higher than I'm gonna go. Yeah, no, I'm not going nine point three. I'm going nine point three. That's that's big. I could because this is a barrel strength that if. I was a psychopath. I could drink it every day. Yeah. I, d- I don't like this as much as, as uh, Elijah Craig's. Well, that's because you're wrong, but that's okay. Well, I don't, but I wouldn't say I'm wrong, but I'm mm. going to give this a uh, a 9.1. It's, it's definitely above a 9. It's definitely in the threshold of mm-hmm. if you see this, you, you... You buy it. Dang flab it, you buy it. All right? You, you see any old Forrester store pick, you buy it. No if you freaking see this, you freaking buy had, it. We've had the 90 proofs, too. Who says freaking all the time? Miranda. Uh, no, no, not Miranda. In a movie. Oh, it's uh, Dr. Evil. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Miranda. <laughs> and Miranda. Miranda says flippin'. No, she says frick. What the frick? Um, yeah, so 9.1 for me, 9.3 for you. That's that's much higher than uh, than I thought. You know what I want to try real quick while we're while we're doing it? Let's pour a little bit of water in it. See how it, see how it affects flavor. Just a t- I'm just pouring in a tad bit more. I only got a touch left, so it's just... Do a water score real quick, just like Chill Filtered. They do this on their podcast. Just a hair. Give that a little bit of a swirly poo. I'm gonna give it a second too. Are uh, you really... gonna shoot it? I'm gonna shoot it. No, you don't <laughs> shoot it. I only got that much. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, I'm shooting it. No, sip it. You don't shoot barrel, dude. It's disrespectful to shoot a whiskey of this caliber. Good point. Oh, it brought it. <laughs> brought it forefront, huh? What are you getting now? I get the Ooh. barrel spices way heavier now. No, I don't. Opposite. I get a, a nice little sweetness. I don't get any. That's weird because you have a big old sniffer on you. Yeah, but not like Grace. No. Well, the, dude, the people don't know who Grace is. Our sister Grace. You got to think about that. sniffer. Dude, I have people who are listening from from like Asia. I have I have like several listeners in Asia. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's William. So nose is definitely I'm getting a, a more pungent sweetness. That tamed it down, but that made it real good. Oh, I like I might like that better. I might like that a hair better. It bitch surprised me because I usually like the higher proof. They definitely tamed it down. I brought it down like a whole ten degrees, but I almost like it better. <laughs> as is well that's how typically that's how i am but with something this hot if you Maybe bring it down water if you bring it down and have uh, 
I think the perfect proof for a whiskey <laughs> is if you broke that snoot glass, I would have kicked your ass. Clearly, it's not going to break because it's a snoot glass. Yeah. But you slammed it hard. Well, yeah. If you broke my table, it's a nice table. You got this table for free. Yeah, it's, who cares? It's a nice table. Shout out uh, Cal. Yeah, shout out to Cal. Ben Doggy Brewing on Instagram. Um, <clears throat> I know what you're saying, though. I, th- I think I put too much water. I, think, I lost my train of thought. I don't. I don't know either. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I think, I think you're right. It probably brought out more of the sweeter notes forefront. But mm. I think what I like so much about this is how because I'm I'm not anti barrel proof or barrel strength by any means, but I tend to go lighter proof. But since this is so, I don't want to say tolerable because tolerable makes it seem like I don't want to drink it. But since it is so tolerable. As, as such a high proof, I almost don't want to proof it down at all or tame it at all. I yeah. like it as is. No, I understand. And I like it as is as well. It's very I'm sure good. I'd feel the same exact way if we the roles were reversed and we were doing Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah. I'd feel the same way. And t- listen, I I usually drink whiskey as they intended to drink, as they intended us to drink it, just neat. It's a water of life. But... There is there is something to say about putting a little bit of water in a barrel proof. I think the best proof. This is what I was gonna say. I think the perfect proof for a whiskey is like a hundred between a hundred and hundred and one hundred and ten. No, I was gonna say a hundred. Well, no, because one hundred ten, hundred twenty, hundred twenty. Like well, a hundred. Perfect this, example. Is yeah, nineteen twenty, hundred hundred fifteen. So I think this brought it down to around there. I mean, this brought it down quite a man. It's probably in the in the mid twenties because it's still hot, but. Yeah, I put way too much water in it, but it's all good. All right, so it's good, though. Uh, 9.1, 9.3, that's the official Who Gives a Dram Whiskey with Kin number three. Whiskey with Kale. <laughs> You're not going to have anyone else on. Yes, I am. No one that's going to be entertaining. Yeah, I will. Except for, like, Seth. I I will. Ryan's going to suck. Nice, dude. Man, stop, stop hating on... Stop hating on my guests here. But my, I'm your my only guest. Guests. I've had two other guests on. Oh, well, no. That's different. Yeah. You guys don't know what they're talking about. Shout out to Nosy Bourbon and shout out to Whiskey Ryan's gonna come on. Ryan's going to come on. You guys, you're going to pour Henry McKenna tenure and he's going to have a Bud Light seltzer. Yeah, probably. He wanted to, <laughs> He actually wanted to come on and review Coors Light. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Maybe. <laughs> do, a blind, do a blind review of all the light beers. Well, I was, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about doing uh, more content for the YouTube channel, but just takes time but it will happen so you guys you can if you want to follow kale on instagram he's at the kale Gil- <laughs> are you at the kale gilbert I'm the kale gilbert okay so uh the kale gilbert um make sure you're you're following the podcast on on um instagram at who gives a dram make sure you're subscribed on all platforms you guys it seriously does help out a lot uh make sure you're subscribed on youtube like the videos leave a comment um and let's let's continue to keep this thing growing because I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, Kale will definitely be back on uh, in the near future. We'll do another whiskey with Ken. Um, We're gonna do 1920. Let's just put the preview out there. Yeah, the next We're gonna yeah, do it'll probably be because I'll tell you the reason right now. I am the reason he likes 1920. I got you into 1920. You had my. I bought it first. You had mine. I, I previously liked it, and then you were like, "Holy shit, this is gold." Does that make you feel like a big man? Yes. All right, yeah. It's your thumbnail. You're, 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 you're skinny fat. Oh, I'm the farthest thing from skinny fat. You're skinny fat. I will put you through that wall. How? What, what are you going to do? So, wait, 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 was that like Professor X? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, you guys, we're out. Take care. Uh, oh, Nick Boss, he's playing us both out this week. Pretty new diamond. Find it on Apple Podcasts or on Apple Music and Spotify. We'll catch you next week. Up in New England, that girl sure loved me. We got together and brought things to life. So I did buy her a pretty new diamond. Ask that sweet woman if she'd be my wife. It was a kind of feeling 
love songs are made of With that sweet woman Spend the rest of my life For she came along I was hurting But at the end of my tunnel I saw no light my heart and I can't keep going guess I'll just sit here and get drunk tonight vows they meant nothing and she ran to a stranger and with Johnny Walker I'm passing my time and I asked the Lord what should I do but I'm too drunk to hear and to so sit with my bottle while Hank Sr. singing I'm so lonesome I could cry Back that pretty new diamond that broke my heart a second time. But I got the last laugh when I pawned off her ring, cause it bought me a dime bag and a case of Coors Light. And I asked the Lord, oh, What should I do? But I'm too drunk to hear him tonight. Sit with my bottle while Hank Sr. singing I'm so lonesome I could cry So sit with my bottle while Hank Sr. singing I'm so lonesome I could